Thanks for watching Retro Tech Toys. Today we're going to be having a look at this mid-2009 aluminum iMac. Now the interesting thing about these Macs is the mid-2009 model, while it's pretty similar to the previous aluminum iMac that came before it, this one was only sold to educational facilities, uh, schools and universities and such. This is an education-only model. Uh, it's pretty similar, like I said, to the previous iMac, but it has a slightly more powerful processor, and it's got a 160 gigabyte hard drive. For the most part, most of the specs are the same. Uh, but this, again, it's a pretty interesting iMac because this wasn't available to the general public. I got one from a liquidator for $50. There's a guy in my area that clears things out. He's got a whole warehouse of computers and office supplies and all this stuff that he buys bulk in auctions, and he sells them for cheap. He had a whole pallet of these the other day, so I had to go grab it. And it was $50, and it came with the keyboard and the mouse. Uh, this particular machine has a gigabyte of RAM. It's got a 2.26 gigahertz Core 2 Duo processor. It's got uh, an NVIDIA GeForce, I believe, 9400, 256 megabyte uh, video card. And uh, that's about all it's got going for it. The specs are kind of low. We're going to see what we can upgrade on it. We'll see if this is a good computer for me going into 2021 because I plan to use this as my main Apple computer until I get an M1, probably in about six months or so. And I'll be using it for word processing, email, some basic web surfing, and I want to run Logic Pro on it. Now, these will only go up to El Capitan officially. We've got a couple things we can do. I'm going to use the DOS Dude 1 hack, which allows you to run all the way up to Catalina, but I don't like Catalina, and I feel that High Sierra runs the best on these older machines, so I'm going to go with that. Also, I believe these machines only officially supported four gigabytes of RAM, but if you have two four gigabyte chips, you can take it up to eight. So we're going to see how far we can upgrade this. Can we add an SSD? Can we add extra RAM? And can we get High Sierra on here and get this thing working so that I can use it through 2021? If you're ready, I'm ready. So let's get started. Okay, we're back. And the first thing we need to do is get under here and we need to switch out this RAM. And uh, it's not very difficult to do. You just have to get under there and uh, take the right bit on your screwdriver. Let's get under here and unscrew it. It looks like it's kind of unscrewed already. All right, that's out. You've got two RAM slots down here. I don't know if I could show you that. I don't know if you can see that. You've got two. You pull on that tab and your RAM comes out. There's our one gigabyte chip. And we're gonna put not four, but eight gigs into this computer. It officially, I believe, only supports four, but with two four gigabyte chips, as long as it likes the RAM, it's a little picky when you do this, but if you put the two four gigabyte chips in, it'll, it'll recognize eight. So we're gonna go ahead and put the eight in. Very quick and easy upgrade. Uh, this by itself will give you so much more speed. All right, we got them in there. Let's get the tabs back into place. I want to show you a nice and easy way to get this open. So we don't have suction cups. What are we going to do? We do have really strong tape. Perfectly safe. I've done it a thousand times. Just make sure you practice on something you don't care about if you're going to try this. I mean, you can go to the hardware store and get a suction cup for a dollar, but it's pretty late. My hardware store is closed and uh, I thought I had a couple around the house and I don't. So we're going to do it this way. This piece of tape, I'm going to make it to where I can get my fingers under it, just like that. I'm going to apply it right here, just like so. Make sure it's on there good. Make sure it's really strong tape. This is industrial strength electrical tape. So we're gonna use one more piece of tape, one for each finger. And let's get that one on there properly. Now just grab, slide your fingers in there. Make sure you get a good grip. And one, two, three, pull. Super easy, guys. Now we've got the cover off. Now that we're back, we've got a couple of screws that we have to take off. And then this screen assembly will pop out. And make sure you get the correct size bit or something darn close or you're going to strip a bunch of screws. So let's go ahead and get these out. And some of these, I think, are going to be different lengths. So just make sure you know where you're putting what.
And also be careful because you got some strong magnets right here that will draw your screwdriver bit to them. And uh, I've seen it before to where a screwdriver has been drug across the screen and scratched it up. So you really want to be careful not to do that. We have the screws off and what we have to do is get this top cover off. So pop it off. And then you want to go down. You, know, you have an eyesight camera that you've got to be careful about over here. Basically what I do is just take that tape off while you're holding this in place. And then you just unplug it and you're done. Let me see if I could zoom in here a little bit so you can see how disgusting this thing is. I know you can see that already, but let's get in a little closer. That is completely nasty. All right, this battery is still working fine, so I'm going to leave it in there because I know how to get to it. This is going to be disgusting, and I should have probably done this outside. I have the tiniest bit of air left in here. I'm just going to do it. And I'll have to wipe everything down later because I've got dust allergies. Everybody in the house does. So let's go ahead. This is the only way I know to get that up. Look at that. That cleaned right up. As you can see, it's totally perfect now. All right, so we have more things that we have to do. And we have to get the actual display off of the computer now. We need to go ahead and disconnect it. And there are a couple other things we have to disconnect too, but when we pull everything off, we don't want you know to rip anything off the motherboard. You absolutely don't want to do that. Let's go ahead and dig in. And I just wanted to say that I know a lot of people lay these down when they're working on them. For some reason, I've always found it a lot easier just to kind of have it standing up and leaning back. I don't know. It works for me. And before I go too much further, I want to go ahead and try to disconnect this over here. All right, we've got that off. So let's go ahead and continue. I know there's going to be more things that we have to unplug. And uh, I know this job would probably be rated moderately difficult to difficult, but once you've done a few of them, it really isn't that bad, guys. There will be some things that you have to unplug. You've got to be so careful. Okay, we're almost done. Every single ribbon cable, you have to unplug it. And there's your display really not that bad. Now it's not really that dusty in here, so I'm taking this hard drive out anyway. Now there is a fan sensor hooked to this hard drive. When we take it out, we're probably going to mess it up. Nine times out of ten, that fan sensor doesn't work right again or it just sticks to the hard drive. So there's an app for that and I'll show you what it is as soon as we get it put back together. This is the hard drive. It's a Western Digital 7200 RPM. They're okay drives, but it's really old and it's gonna get really replaced. Here's where the sensor goes. Okay, I'm really surprised. I think we managed to get the whole sensor off and that never happens. So we may not even need to download anything. If you did need to download something, it's an app called Max Fan Control and you can control the speed of your fan because without the sensor attached to your hard drive, it doesn't know what temperature your hard drive is, so it'll just spin super fast. All right, I'm just going to kind of wipe out with a dry cloth some of this gross stuff that's left. I'm not going to take out the salon brush or any of that stuff for this. Because for the most part, everything looks pretty good in here. The fans aren't that bad after they got blown out. I'm going to put the new hard drive in. So we've got 8 gigs of RAM, and we're going to put in a Crucial MX300 275 gigabyte hard drive or solid state drive. Definitely want to go with an SSD for these guys. And I know some of y'all are going to come at me for this, but the easiest way to install this is a way that you may not like. The easiest way to install it is to tape it in, unless you're going to really go through all that trouble to 3D print something. And let's go ahead and try to get this sensor on. Now, as you can see, it's not fully taped around and it's not going anywhere. This is fine to do in a pinch. If you want to 3D print something, you can. So let's get all these wires tucked in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and wipe the screen down. I'm actually going to go off of camera for this and I'm going to come back and this will be put back together. All you have to do is put it back together the exact same way we took it apart. 
And here it is, the mid-2009 education-only Apple iMac. It's totally restored. It has been really, really upgraded from what it was initially. And uh, let's turn it on and see what we got. All right, it's powering up. I adjusted the camera so that you could see the screen. We are all set up. I use the DOS dude method. And as you can see, I've got Lemmy Kilmister as my uh, picture there because I'm a big metal head and I love Motorhead. Now, since we're on the desktop now, I've got to turn the picture way up so we can see it better. Here we go. I'm going to take the keyboard and mouse over here so I can steer it. Officially, as I said, this only runs El Capitan. Using the DOS Dude 1 method, I have it running High Sierra. Just so you can see the specs, let's go to About This Mac. And there you have it, Mac OS High Sierra version 10.13.6, and this is a 20-inch mid-2009 iMac, Intel Core 2 Duo. Now we have 8 gigabytes of 1333 MHz DDR3 RAM. We've got that NVIDIA GeForce 9400 at 256 megabytes, and uh, there you go. We're running. And we've got two 4 gigabyte chips in, just like I said you could. And we took the hard drive and got that 160 gig hard drive out. And I put a 275 gig SSD inside here. So it's running much faster. If you want here, we'll go ahead and check out some internet sites. Let's go to youtube.com. We'll find my channel. All right, let's look at my latest video. Hey there, welcome back to Retro Tech Toys. Well, and we can go all the way up to 4K, but this thing is not going to run 4K video. You're not doing it. Basically... When using Chrome, and you could probably use Safari or something, you run 720p beautifully. It runs it perfectly. But 720p YouTube isn't bad at all. I can also use Logic. I was using it earlier. Uh, I am a musician, so I do a lot of recording. And I saw someone in one of my other videos ask what interface I use. I used to use a Scarlett interface, a Scarlett Solo. I don't use those anymore. Now I have a USB cable that has a USB connection on one end and a guitar cable connection on the other end. I uh, just go right into the USB port for that and I use Guitar Rig to record guitar and bass. And if I'm doing vocals or something else, I just use a USB microphone like a Snowball. Uh, I get really good results for Synthesize instruments, I do have a MIDI controller. I've got a MIDI keyboard. And you're, you know, just regular web surfing works pretty well. Logic works really well. iMovie works okay. GarageBand works. All the basic stuff that comes with Mac OS works fine. Uh, iTunes and Apple Music, it works. Your email works. Word processing works. And that's basically what I'm using this computer for. I'm using it for word processing. I might play a couple of games on here. Basically, all you're going to be looking at retro gaming and maybe a couple of emulators. That's what I'm going to be using this for. And overall, I think it's going to be a really cool setup. And I'm really glad to have it. So... We fixed up the 2009 iMac. It's running well. If you want to know how to update your 2009 iMac to High Sierra and beyond, I'll leave a link to DOS Dude's tutorial. He takes you through all the steps. It's a really easy process. You won't have any problems. Anyone can do this. Uh, it's all set up for me, and I'm really excited about it because I love these older aluminum iMacs. I think they're great machines. You know, you're not going to be doing a lot of gaming and other things on it, but basic tasks and stuff that's a little more advanced, like audio production through Logic Pro. And uh, that's it. I'm going to use this thing like crazy for the next six months, probably. And you may see it in some more videos because I'll be doing other things with it as well. So going into 2021, I think this is a perfectly good machine. I wouldn't be paying into the hundreds for it. Well, if you can get one for under $100, I think you're doing pretty well. And uh, that's all I have for today. This is my last video of 2020. Happy New Year's. Here's to 2021. Thanks for watching Retro Tech Toys. I'll see you next time.